What's up YouTube, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you how to create radial progress bars. Now before we begin, I want to make it clear that this is not a tutorial on the mechanism of fake or real progress bars. I've already done a tutorial on that topic. If you'd like to check it out, the link's in the top right corner and in the description down below. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to change the look of your progress bar. Because generally when you create a progress bar, you might create something that looks like this, which is a slider. Or if you use an image, you might create something that looks like this or like this. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create something that looks like this. Also, for the purpose of this tutorial, I've created five sprites over here using a free program called Krita. You can use your own sprites, but if you would like to use these sprites, then the download link will be in the description down below. So let's begin. We're going to start with an empty scene. Click Game Object, UI, Image. This is going to create a canvas and an image within that canvas. Move the image to the left side of the canvas and select the Rect tool so that we can resize this image. Hold down Shift and then resize the image. Holding down Shift will basically maintain the aspect ratio of the image. Now make two duplicates of this image. Place one duplicate in the center and the other one on the right side. Real quick guys, I forgot to mention this earlier. When you import these sprites into Unity, there's a chance that they might get imported as textures, in which case they're going to look something like this. Basically just the sprite but with a black background. If that happens, just change the texture type to sprite and hit apply. And then you can use it as a sprite. All right, so now let's take a look at the image component attached to our image game object. Within the image component, you have a couple of fields. First of all, you have source image. This is a texture that represents the image to display, which of course must be imported as a sprite. Next, you have color. This is a color to apply to the image. Next, you have material. This is a material to use for rendering the image. You can leave this blank if you want. Next, you have raycast target, which is a checkbox. This is not important for the purpose of this tutorial so we're not going to go much into detail with this and finally you have preserve aspect I'll explain this a little later so with the first image selected drag and drop the test 7 sprite from your project panel to the source image field now the first thing you'll notice after you drag and drop the test 7 sprite into this field is that this image is no longer a white box the actual sprite has been drawn over here you'll also notice another property has popped up over here which is image type image type basically describes how the image is going to be drawn we have four options simple sliced tiled and filled for the purpose of this tutorial we only need filled so change the image type to fill. Once you do that, you'll see more properties appearing over here. So let's take a look at them. First of all, you have fill method. This is what type of fill method you want to use. If you expand the drop down, you'll see five options here. Currently radial 360 is selected. So let's just leave it at radial 360. Next you have fill amount. This is the amount of the image that is shown. It is currently set to one, which is the max value and the lowest value is zero. So gradually decrease this value using the slider and you'll notice this image starts to, let's say, disappear or cut away or you can see what's happening. So this is what fill amount does. Now about fill origin, set the fill amount to zero and start gradually increasing it. You'll notice the fill starts from the bottom. That is what fill origin decides basically. In fill origin, you have four options, which is bottom, right, top and left. So if I set this to left, you'll notice the fill origin has now changed to left and so it starts filling from the left side and the same goes for top and right next we have clockwise this basically decides whether you want the fill to be clockwise or counterclockwise if it's checked then it's going to be clockwise which is like this and if it's unchecked it's going to be counterclockwise which is like this and finally, you have preserve aspect. Preserve aspect basically decides whether the image should preserve the sprite's aspect ratio or not. To test this out, set the fill amount to one, zoom out a little bit and resize the image without holding down the shift key. This will basically resize the image without maintaining the aspect ratio of the image. So that basically means that you can stretch it and make the image look different. Now currently this image looks stretched out. That's because the aspect ratio hasn't been maintained. But if you check preserve aspect, then the aspect ratio of the image, not the image, but rather the sprite. The aspect ratio of the sprite is maintained at all times. Change the image back to its normal size and let's move on. Before continuing, just change the sprite from test 7 to test 5. I'm doing this because I have kept an empty space in the center of the sprite so you can see what kind of effect radial 360 has 
when you use it with such a sprite. Now let's move on. Click the second image and drag and drop test 11 into the source image and change the fill method to radial 90. Now again you have the same properties over here so I don't need to explain them. What I do need to explain is fill amount and fill origin. Now fill amount in this case has a different effect. Of course the max is 1 and uh, 0 is the minimum but when you reduce the fill amount you'll notice it has a different behavior compared to radial 360 and you can also change the fill origin for this as well currently it is set to bottom left which is why you see it filling from here but you can change this to let's say top left and then you'll have a different behavior or you can set it to say top right and then you'll have a different behavior of course uh, clockwise and preserve aspect it all applies the same over here as well now I've drawn this sprite in such a way that this sort of fill origin makes sense but let's try adding a different sprite let's try test 8 instead of test 11 and now let's try reducing the amount you have a different sort of effect Alright, so that's it about radial 90. Next, let's take a look at radial 180. Select the third image, drag and drop test 13 sprite into the source image and change the image type to filled and the fill method to radial 180. Again, you have the same properties, only this time when you change the fill amount, you have a different behavior compared to radial 90 and radial 360. Again, even over here, you can control the fill origin. Currently, it's set to the bottom, which is why you have this sort of an effect. You can set it to left or top or right and just like radial 90 and 360 you have the option to choose whether the fill should be clockwise or counterclockwise also preserve aspect Alright, so now that I've explained these three radial fill methods to you, let's create a simple script to watch these moving a little more smoothly. Right click in the hierarchy and create an empty game object. You can rename this to scripts and add a new script to this game object. Call it radial progress bar script 04. Open this up in mono develop. Alright, here first of all type using unity engine.ui. Then within the class type public image progress bar. Then in the update method type if progress bar dot fill amount is not equal to 1f basically meaning if it's not full then progress bar dot fill amount plus equals 0.001f hit save go back to unity and first of all disable this script so it doesn't run as soon as we run the game next drag and drop either one of these image objects into the progress bar field also before running the game select all three image objects and set their fill amounts to zero Okay, before playing the game, I realized that 0.001 is a little too slow. So make it 0.01 instead and hit save and go back to Unity. Now make sure you have the scripts object selected and then hit play. Now enable the script and as you can see, slowly this image fills up. Stop the game and you can change the progress bar to one of the other images. Let's try the one that uses radial 180. Now run the game and when you enable the script, you'll see this image filling up as well. So yeah, that's it. This is how you create radial progress bars. Alright guys, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. There's a lot more where that came from. If you would like to check out my previous tutorial, which is shown in the left side of the screen, the link's in the description down below. And if you would like to check out the APV1 development vlogs, which is shown in the right side of the screen, the link's in the top right corner and in the description down below. I'm also accepting donations. So if you'd like to help me out, you can send your donations to my PayPal email address, which is mentioned on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.